Dream Picnic. Yeah, so it wasn't me. Nope, not you. Well, that BTS internet. It's sketch, man. It's it's super sketch. Has it been better since the yeah, qualifiers? Or that's is it... th that's the first time it's happened in like the last week. But I think we're I think okay. we're good. We should be back online. Hello, stream. You've got a frozen ice 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 that you're looking at. Let's let's get over that. Let's pick the Chinese stream. Sorry about that, guys. Um, refresh your stream. So if you're hearing me, you obviously don't need to refresh your stream. Uh, but we'll look to get get things back and running as uh, as shortly as possible. But uh, yeah, we got game three coming up. All right, we're in the lobby. It's been remade. I was. I was just bringing up the Invoker so far for DK has not worked out well yep. at all. I'm wondering if they're even going to be picking it up in game number three. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the thing. I definitely think that IG are going to leave it in there, you know, just because they've they've let it through twice already. They've let Ice 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 have it. And I mean, he's played it well, but at the same time, uh, I feel like DK might just think, OK, look, we got to go back to our normal roles. We got to uh, maybe just play something that's a little bit more more comfortable for them, because this is this is, as far as DK go, a more niche strategy, right? The majority of their drafts, the majority of their games, they're not getting the Invoker. They're not making this lane swap. And the, the practice is definitely very important. You know, there, there is a reason that we don't see that much swapping of roles and whatnot uh, at the highest level, just because practice and muscle memory and all of that account for, account for a lot. Yeah, and you can, like, there's some roles, like, which are quite, like, you can swap four position support with a five position yeah. support, but... Offlane is very different to anything else in the game. The way you play offlane is, like, it's probably the most unique role out there because it's not really about getting kills, even getting farm. It's about being, like, maximizing your efficiency while applying pressure and trying to get as much information as possible. Like, it's such a unique role that I feel it's quite a hard adjustment for a mid player to make to suddenly go to the offlane every now and then in, like, less than 10% of your matches. Yeah, and there's definitely evidence of that adjustment, you know, being hard for some mid players. Like Ice Ice Ice, when he first started playing the, the mid role, I know that he seemed to struggle a little bit. Well, you know, when he was transitioning over to the off lane, he struggled a little bit with acclimatizing and, and all of that. So nothing against Mushi, of course, as a, as a player. But like we were saying, experience just accounts for a lot. And Luo having catching some Zs in between the, the games, <laughs> anticipating that... Anticipating that this could be a long one. This is this is meditation. This isn't sleeping. This is Luo trying to get ready to burst out, go like Super Saiyan Seven, and just wreck Become it up in Game hits. Three. Absorb the last hits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's done well so far. He's hits. he's beat like he's his, done well. His Lycan game especially. Uh, he was focused firing all the right targets. He farmed really efficient efficiently. Like I I think his Lycan was really good. His Venomancer was, I think, slightly lower impact, but that's more because he was a Venomancer. So. I can't really can't really fault him for too much of his play in that game. Yeah, definitely not. Lewis had a had a solid series overall. And I guess the other question is, so we talked about are DK gonna be switching Ice 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 back to the offlane and putting Mushi mid and going for one of their other uh drafting options. Maybe also ignoring the Chen potentially. That's the other big sticking point that they've had in these games. And I think that's a lot of the reason why they felt that they've needed to to close the games out relatively quickly, take full advantage of the Chen push. Um, and that's where they've maybe gotten a little bit ahead of themselves. Because, I mean, that, that's the story of both game one and game two. DK, they control the early game pretty well. They get some kills. They get ahead. They find a, you know some opening, some opportunity. They make a push up onto the high ground. And that's where everything sort of falls apart for them. So... There's that, and then I also wonder if maybe if IG are going to again consider putting Ferrari on a semi carry or something like that, or if it is going to be um, IG going back to tempo controllers and whatnot. And I, I'd like to see IG running some of their other strategies that they've shown of the oh, person's yeah. competition. They're up, at, they're ahead now. Pugna strats, all that kind of stuff could come out. I think IG are very flexible. Like we had Ferrari Morphling there, but in the past they've run Ferrari on a puck while Luo played an anti major or something. Like they can easily go back to a four protect one style if they want to. I think it's going to come down to what's left in the pool and what they feel they need to go for, which, well, the bands kind of dictate. If they can get the Lycan, they'll put Lua probably back on it. So, draft underway. We've reloaded in. IG leading 2-0 in the best of seven grand finals for the WPC. Two wins away from getting the lion's share of that $250,000 prize pool, as well as basically the title, in, in some sense, of the best team in China. Like, that's kind of what the WPC is all about, is finding the best team at least the best team on that given day. And right now, so far at least, it's been IG. Yeah, so 
what have we had so far? Last game it was um, IG Dyer with first pick. First pick they Bat Rider, the, yeah. They got the Bat Rider. Game one was first DK pick and Dyer with first pick Invoker? Yep. Okay, so do, are they just doing... Um, is it always going to be... It's Dyer first pick. Di it's again. Dyer first pick. Okay, so I, I guess either there's they're doing a selection thing for the teams um or they're yeah or they're just alternating and always giving dire first pick i'd be interested to know honestly because i i i like to both i, I like the selection process in terms of seeing where teams preferences are yeah. and then yeah just just knowing what that is because different teams and different scenes do have different preferences and, and that's another thing to add on you know on top of the draft and all of the other small metagamey aspects that go into Dota. I imagine it's a selection process, but in the past, yeah. Chinese teams have almost, even recently in 6.1, they almost always prefer the Dire side. Like, they will choose Dire over Radiant, which is kind of different from the Western teams, but yeah. they also but also getting first, first pick. pick. Yeah, yeah. so that that's the weird thing. So it makes you think they either wanted second pick or Radiant. It's probably more likely they chose Radiant over second pick, although some teams do like second pick. Um, mm. so, so, I'm not sure. IG? Is it going to be Lycan or is it going to be Batrider? Which one do they For want DK, they yeah. have? They, yeah. They're thinking this one through. I think they're going to go Batrider. Okay, so they'll give away the IG Lycan and IG kind of have to pick it. Like, you give away Batrider plus Lycan, that's not really ideal. Oh, sorry, I'm spoiling again, aren't I? Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back, back in those gods. spoils. Yep, I've done it. All right. I've, I've got up my, my blank MS Paint to cover it up, so... <laughs> They're going to first pick Batrider, guys. I spoiled it. but Yeah, okay. So IG banned the Doom instead, which is another here that we've seen banned pretty heavily in this in this series. And again, IG are not going to give them the Enchantress. I, I, I predicted it coming in, but just because IG didn't give it to Newbie at all, and looks like that's the exact same game plan for them. And I think it makes a lot of sense if you just look at the way that the pace of Game 1 and Game 2 developed. Like We just touched on it a, a couple of minutes ago that... For a lot of it, it's been IG focusing on split pushing and dragging games out and um, winning it in the later stages. So Enchantress is something they don't really want to have to, to deal with. And they've had success playing against the Chen. So um, we'll see if, if DK are going to stick to their guns or if we're going to see maybe something a little bit different out of them this game. But yeah, like you said, IG feel that they have to take the like it. It's in the pool. They're not going to give DK both. And we'll see what they want to pick up with the Lycan as their secondary pick here. We had uh, the Shadow Demon being picked up in the past to deal with the Batrider, although it didn't work out in the end for DK. Uh, if I do want to not reveal too much, they probably look towards one of their two supports here. I don't think they, they... They don't really seem to care about the Chen too much themselves, and uh, they don't really care if DK picks it up. They go Rubik with the with the Lycan, so get that Insta Point Disable as well as one of uh, Chuan's best heroes, so... I think this is a, a good opening from IG. You can't leave the Lycan as well. DK will snag, snag it up as they, they carry if they can get that with the Batrider. And there's, it's not like you're picking up too many OP heroes that don't synergize as well at all. Because Batrider yeah. plus Lycan does just fine. Yeah, and IG just keep things super non-committal with the Rubik. Uh, there's still plenty of support options in the pool as far as quote-unquote dealing with the Batrider. Uh, you're probably not going to be seeing Rubik and Shadow Demon. Um, I don't know, DK might even consider... Um, Whoa. if it makes it through picking Kunka. up Shadow Demon. First two like picks, that. Kunkka. Okay. It's... The, the Mushi I like, Kunkka. I like the idea of picking the Kunkka. It's, I, Mushi's done so well on this hero throughout the tournament, but really jumped the gun. They pick it up in the first two picks, which is the surprising thing for me. Yeah, I think that's a little bit... It's a little bit out of the ordinary. <laughs> it's mean, like, it's... You're, you're revealing to your opponents, like, what you're doing unnecessarily. Like, if you just pick up a support, be it... The Ancient Apparition, the Shadow Demon, whatever it may be. Um, you don't really reveal too much about your strategy, but the Kunker just says, we're doing Kunker mid, Batrider off lane probably for Ice Ice Ice, and then just all that's left is the Tri lane. I guess you can mix it up and pick like a Lich and do some dual lanes or whatever it may be, but I feel like DK just gave IG a ton of information with that pick. Yeah, DK do really like the Kunker against the Lycan, just because of the way that, that Mushi plays it in terms of running around and just setting up boats and... Um, finding pickoffs. So I, I've seen them do this a little bit in the past, but yeah, I, I, I am surprised to see them take it uh, this early on. Uh, something that I know that I've, I've heard a little, you know, a few people discussing here and there is potentially running some support Kunkka, but 
I don't know if we're going to be seeing that this game at all. I'm, I'm, I'm I feeling pretty yeah. confident to say it's going to be in the hands of Mushi. Yeah, I think that's a, a, <laughs> a fair assumption to make, at least at this stage. It'd be a, a surprising turn of events if they suddenly run a support conquer here. So we'll get on to our next stage of bans. DK ban out the Puck as well as Lifestealer. Uh, meanwhile, Shadow Shaman being banned out by IG as the third ban. So nothing nothing too crazy there. I think the Lifestealer ban is probably one of the more interesting bans because IG already have the Lycan. But last time around, they did run Lycan mid and then go for an offensive trial lane. So the potential is always there. For IG to run like Lycan as well as Lifestealer in a dual core kind of setup. Yeah, and the the YYF Lifestealer is pretty scary as yeah. well. It's one of his his most played heroes. So I think I think smart from DK to go for that. Uh, mm. The Shadow Demon has made it through to the second round. IG probably IG go Chen. They themselves. could take it. Okay. Go Chen. Not spoiling. It's been go. picked up. It's it's just been picked. Yeah. Okay. So. DK have the option to take the Shadow Demon if they want to set up for the Kanka, but again, Mushi plays a build where he kind of set, sets up for himself. Uh, so he's not, they don't 100% need uh, a pick off here, something like that. Is, is that Ice 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 eating a, an apple pie? Is, I'm, is that... I'm trying to figure out what it is. It looks like one of those like McDonald's it looks like, things. Yeah, it looks like a McDonald's apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> at first it looked like a, at first I was like oh it's like a granola bar thing and I was like look close I'm like oh no that looks does not look looks, like a granola bar look, looks kind of greasy yeah I don't know so, get them somebody message foods, Ice 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 and figure it out yeah <laughs> where are the health foods at anyway. he's always eating food or drinking hot chocolate MLG eating bananas at the Mars Dota 2 league you gotta keep yourself fueled up it's a it's yeah. an extended series and it's already been like what three hours or so up until this point with two drafts and the two games i i totally agree I, that's why I, I mean i think bananas make good i mean any any snack to keep you just energized is obviously good but like you look at like professional sports and stuff people will be eating snacks like during breaks and downtime whenever they can like when i i play tennis and stuff like you'd after like the first or second set you'd pull out a banana and just chow down because yeah. you don't know how long that match is going and this is the best of seven so well wor worthwhile idea to uh make sure you're you're energized so for IG, the cards are on the table, pretty much. They've got Chen, they've got Lycan. They've shown some very clear intentions to push. We've talked about in previous drafts with the Batrider being picked up that five manning is actually a really nice way uh, to deal with being afraid of the Batrider and, and those potential pickoffs. So I, I like strategically what IG are doing as well. But the question becomes, can, can DK deal with it? And I guess the one big thing to look out for is is maybe a little bit more team fight for them. They go for the Lion, which is nice as far as pickoffs are concerned, but they don't have all that much counter push, and they, they're still a little bit lacking if they're going to be team fighting directly into IG, which is another really strong way to just deal with the five-man pushing lineup. IG do make the decision to not go like all-out push, because they could have easily picked up like the YYF Nature's Profit and get a mid kind of like tempo-controlling pushing here, like a well, Puck's, I guess, being banned out, but um, they go for the team fight element as well as having the lichen on their side so it's not going to be like all in push although i mean in theory they could still win the game fast if they start snowballing out of control but they want to make sure they have the team fight on lock with this tight under pickup it is a good counter initiator to the bat rider which i think is one of the really nice things about this hero here uh bat you can't really lasso the tide and if bat does go in and forces a team fight and initiation that's where ty can just blink in and and wreck shit up so yeah i, I like the yeah tide. i think it i think it's really good here it's like a it's a very standard push strat coming out of IG. I think, like, Nature's Profit, while it seems like it's more pushy in, in some senses, at the at the same time, you know if you're five manning, if you're pushing, you're going to be forcing fights, and you definitely need to have that team fight aspect uh, as well. They don't think The one that they don't really have is any kind of pick-off, though playing into that, DK don't really have anybody that you 100% have to pick off to be able to push, so... Um, if they're looking for that, it can come a little bit later. And DK just going to go for the Witch Doctor. Nice pickup. We've been seeing it trending a little bit more recently. And also pretty nice. Nice against the push. Nice for team fights. Uh, I think the, the heal is going to synergize really nicely with the rum from Kanka. And then the other factor is, is that it's pretty damn good against Chen Creeps uh, with the cask. So I think a, a nice pickup here for DK. Gives them some more team fight options as well. Adding yeah. into the later stages of the game. Yeah, I, I like the pick a lot. So we'll we'll see what the last picks are going to be for both the two teams here. DK still do not have that burning carry hero. That's he's no. been playing. What's what's kind of be playing? Clinks would be okayish, not at the best against the push and team fight. 
Um, otherwise, you look towards your more standard ones, your Lunars, your Anti-Mages. Anti-Mage actually gets banned out. Um, so we'll see exactly what DK have in mind for burning as their last pick. Anything that kind of stands out as far as options there? Um, hmm. It's, it's tough. Uh, I mean, obviously, Clinks comes to mind because of the Chen, but I don't think it's, like you said, that incredible just because IG are already very comfortable 5 manning and picking a Clinks just gives them more reason to do exactly that. So if you pick the Clinks, then the early game would have to go really well. Uh, for DK, just to keep it in, in a more even game. Um, they do have the option to wait to see what IG picks. And IG go Viper. Yeah. So uh, this is big five-man kind of push style from IG. The Viper just gives them that. Normally, you'd say fast mech buy. You've got the Chen on your team as well. I think maybe you still want your Viper to go for the mech just because you can get that eight to nine-minute mech on the Viper, which Chen can't really get unless you have an amazing game as a Chen. But DK, see the Viper pick and... You want something that can fight a bit earlier than a normal carry hero, maybe. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, you want a BKB against the Tide. You don't want to be melee because of the Viper. Um, so, uh, Gyrocopter, maybe? Yeah, like, that's it's more counter -push. fight. It's yeah. counter push. It's ranged. It buys a fast BKB. Nope, Naga to. Siren. <laughs> okay. well, it's melee, but I guess it's a melee hero that doesn't mind the Viper Strike in some ways. No. But... Oh, do you spoil arenoing again, or am I just behind? No, no, your, your Chinese okay. stream must I'm just, just be behind. I'm just behind. There yeah, you yeah. Go. That's, that was a there you go. slightly out there pick. We'll see Naga Siren, probably safe lane, because Kunkka doesn't really want to try lane. Kunkka's definitely a mid-preferred hero, but not to mention, who wants to go against the Viper mid? Uh, Naga Siren solo, no. Kunkka solo, not really, but it's probably the best that DK have right now. So I, I guess DK have decided that Okay, look, we're just going to put it on IG, win the game fast, or our Naga Siren is going to end it for you, which is not the same way strategically that the other games up until this point have, have really sat as far as strategy is concerned. So mixing things up a little bit, and yeah, it is going to be, it's going to be burning on that Naga Siren. So this is your, this is your late game. Well, this is, this is your one position Naga at the very least. Um, DK, I don't know if they're going to go aggressive here. Naga's actually pretty good trialing versus trialing, and you do want to put some pressure on the Lycan. Um, but you have to be afraid of the Chen, and Tidehunter is actually not too bad a 1v1 matchup against the Batrider. So yep. I don't think you're necessarily getting default wins out of your lanes by going aggressive. But they do want to come play some wards regardless. Block, block the Chen's jungle as much as possible, as uh, we'll see Chuan scout at the Batrider leading the way. He's got boots first. As that uh, looks like even even further scouting coming out. So they block the camp with an observe of oh, observe observe void actually. Yeah, so they get vision as well as the battle. block and this is a really nice obs. It's actually just on the edge of the spawn box. This is the right. bottom left corner of it. So yeah. it, it can be you... it can be pretty difficult to deal with. Yeah, there's so many different spots here. You have that spot which scouts out the room, which is sometimes used. We saw last game IG use the spot in the, uh, the trees, trees, which didn't get yeah. dewarded. It's it's tough. Like, players are just finding new ward spots every single game, it feels like, when it comes to the battle uh, blocking begins. these neutral camps. Chen is going to get the D ward on the other big camp. Nicely placed sentry ward there. And uh, Chuan will at least have one big camp to play around with. We'll see if he can get the second sentry ward as well. Uh, it looks like he's not going to get it. He puts it for his medium camp, and that's not where it's weighted. Yeah. Chuan has a smoke picked up, so we'll see if he's going to be a little bit more aggressive as far as his Chen play is concerned. Ice Ice is just going to be a nuisance with these early boots. Comes down, swipes the creep wave, secures himself level 2. So, this is something that a whole lot of offlane players don't really do, but it's it. I really like it, personally, yeah. as... It like, used especially to happen all the, the time. Get away with it. Go back yeah, to 6.79 when offlaners were actually playing the hard lane. Like, it was it was called the suicide lane for a reason, and it was, it was like, almost essential for some heroes like Bounty Hunter to do that creep skipping tactic. As I say, he's just running around in circles right now to avoid some of the damage. He wants to get the creep wave equilibrium right where he wants it. Yes. So that's the, the plan from him. And checking in on our other matchups, it's Viper versus Kunkka mid. Ferrari doing a pretty good job of just playing up aggressively and keeping the Kunkka away from the wave for now. But once Mushi starts to get more points up in Tidebringer, uh, the problem for Ferrari is going to be that the wave is always pushing yeah. into him. But at least this is a really nice start. And Ice 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 has a full creep wave at his tower, or double creep wave at his tower, with a ton of napalm stacks, so he should actually get a lot of these last hits. Uh, unfortunately, missing a couple, but he's got six, seven, eight napalm stacks on one creep here. 
Holy moly. As uh, we'll see uh, him do just fine here. Meanwhile, mid lane, Chen sent a tornado to help harass even more. As if Mushi doesn't have a hard enough time already against a Viper, Chuan's going to make his life even more miserable. It also sucks for Kunkka. Corrosive skin procs whenever you do cleave damage. So it's actually a really tough lane for Kunkka for that reason as well. Regeneration. Yeah, though, fortunately, Mushi, the way that he plays Kunkka is not all that farm dependent. YWF going to do a good job of scouting out this smoke gank coming in. Well, I don't even know if it was a smoke gank. No, they didn't smoke. Can't. They were just wondering. Yeah. They were just checking the room. Just checking the two minutes. Like. Yeah. yeah. Not exactly. They haven't got X marks to spot, and it's like a level one lion who actually went impale. Um, as well as Witch Doctor. So I don't think they have much kill potential until like level 2 to 3. So, mm -hmm. oh, SSS, so Finds Aestrin. Just this gonna is... have a poke around, see what's going on. Yeah, see if he can where get the this troll. And... Actually, may... Ooh, he gets a, de gets a deny, but he still gets experience for that, I believe. No, was he? he... Oh, I think it was already level 3, so maybe he didn't get experience. The <laughs> skeleton denies the skeleton. These are some cute <laughs> plays coming. Nothing going away of ice, ice, ice. Sad, sad time. Sad life. All right. Meanwhile, Luo just getting some okay farm. Ferrari going to get harassed a little bit. Just going to pick up a magic stick here. So, IG, I think the early game going about the way that they would like. You know, they're going to start five manning a little bit later on. Ice, ice, ice does have some good levels. Actually finds Faith here. He's going to force out at least a telekinesis here. Faith may actually go down. Ice 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 is committed to this one. He waited so he could get nice and close. And this is going to be first blood. Ice Ice Ice. He strikes first. And now Lua uh, may actually try and fight this one. Firefly doing a bit of damage to these walls. It wears off. Ice 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 is just going to turn and attack them. He's going to go for both. He'll get both. First blood, two wolf kills. He'll go back to Fountain. And that's a fantastic start for DK. The positioning was perfect. With the trees here, he's hiding there. And then the fight starts with... Batrider already on top of the Rubik, so Rubik cannot get away from the Firefly. Really nicely played. Yeah, and this is, I think, Ice Ice's biggest strength as an offlane player, that he knows the limits, or he's found the limits really well in terms of how much he can get away with, how much he can disrupt pulls, how much he can pressure, and yeah. occasionally it results in kills, so... Occasionally it does also result in... Up. Occasionally it does also result yeah. in, like, his death, like, he'll... Because he's always okay. trying to push the limit and get as much much out of it as possible. So sometimes it's like a little too far and he does go down. But as an offlaner... He definitely like, toes the line, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. But hey, if you're getting first blood as an offlaner, you you can theoretically just be winning your team the game off of that. So it, it's worth kind of taking those risks. Yeah, and by the way, deciding that he's had enough of the offlane, it looks like he may have had... Uh, an observer ward at some point. I don't think there's a second ward now. So it looks like he did end up getting, did end up getting dewarded uh, up on top, and that's gonna prompt him to decide. Look, okay, I'm just gonna head into the jungle, start securing my levels. Ice, ice, ice. Meanwhile, just gonna be a nuisance and split up some of this experience. He may just get a kill or two kills. We'll see. Why, why, yeah? He's five fly on top of him. Unfortunately, the viper shows up, and that's a level three poison attack. Ice, ice, ice. It's one of those times where he just overstays his welcome, goes a bit too far, a bit too hard, and Ferrari is there, puts him back down, puts him in his place, and it's a. a what did he expect? Thing. He's like, he's like, I... he's he's right next to mid. The yeah. viper just strolls over and kills him. He thought he could maybe get the tide out of that. Under attack. I, I, I'm watching. I'm like, if that's me, I'm going for that kill. And like, like I said, I, I probably would have died there as well. So. <laughs> As, so as a go. caster, I can understand why he went for it, because as a player, I would have done the exact same thing. Especially Kindred if you get spirits. first blood. You get first blood and you think you're Radiant's invincible. Top tower is under attack. Look at me, I'm such a high level. <laughs> level 4, two, step, two points sticky, two points firefly, here we go, this is the dream. <laughs> Meanwhile, DK gonna strike first as far as towers are concerned. Yeah. They Radiant's get the tier 1 up on top lane, nobody fallen. grabs the last hit. Um, which, I guess we have, we have to keep pointing out, because it is worth something nowadays. But, um, Especially Radiance when you're trying to rush a Radiance, like that's yeah. 250, 300-ish gold that Burning could have gotten. So, yeah. Not the end of the world, but a, a small little thing for, for a Naga Saren especially. Yeah, and IG, they take, you know, not really taking a run at bottom lane. Chuan's actually going to be making his way back over to top, so... The Tide and the Chen. This is a really crucial point of the game. Lion just wants to go yeah. for a single pull. Get the wave back so that Burning can yeah. just free farm at his tower, and it looks like he'll do just that. Um, and it's a double camp, so this is actually going to deny most of the creep wave. This is actually really good for Burning as far as securing his farm at this top lane. We could be looking at 
He doesn't even need to go for a Ring of Aqua. He's just going to go straight for a Radiance, maybe, at this rate. Yeah, Centaur on the side. Yeah. Brennan getting a little bit greedy with the farm here. And wants Rubik coming wants as well. to get these denies. Yeah, they really want this kill. Brennan, you've, you've overstayed your welcome, perhaps. He gets lifted up. He's got magic sick charges, but I don't know if this is going to be enough. He's already popped them. He's going to be brought down. He just... Dry. That was too greedy. He went for, like, going for a deny. He pays the price. He could have just backed off, and the creep wave was was going to push to his tower because of MMY's pull. That was very unnecessary. I definitely agree there. We're going to see DK make their way towards middle lane. They get revealed, but Ferrari does not quite see them just yet. Ice Ice Ice, level 5, no flaming lasso up just yet. And DK, I mean, you look at that, that's something which a mistake Bernie would not normally make. He went the entire playoffs up until the Grand Finals without a single death across four games, and it's because he normally made the safe play, but... You lose a couple games, and it's almost like you, your decision-making kind of goes out the window. You make these... You try to play more greedy, you go a bit on tilt, and you just don't play that same calculated Dota that you normally would play. Yeah, it was a little bit sloppy from Brinning, but maybe... Maybe there was a call that Faith didn't have a TP scroll, or... Yeah. Something like that, you know. You, you, you can never know, though, so, yeah. It was definitely... Just just looking at it at face value is definitely not a situation yeah, that he should have been in, and... IG going to keep up this aggression, mm. trying to muscle their way through the early to mid game uh, without really grabbing too much farm. It's worked so far, and let's see if this gank on mid is going to be successful. It might be revealed from the high ground. Oh, Mushi runs into him, but he gets lifted up. The cask is there. This may save Mushi's life. They're trying to get this kill, but the impale catches YWF as well. The boat goes flying onto the high ground there. As YYF, one or two more right clicks will finish him off. Mushi wants the kill. He can't get it, though. He gets brought down before he can kill off the Tide there. The Tide just too damn tanky, and Ferrari's not done. He's still got the poison attack. Great tour impale from MMY. Will save the life of Lamb on that Witch Doctor. Well played by IG. Nice little gank there. They just barely brought down the Kanka. As, uh, DK not done at this mid lane. They realize they need to defend this town. They're going to lay down the Firefly just to deal with the push. And Luo going to pull over here as well. So IG pretty committed to taking this tower. Attack. But we'll see if they're going to be successful. Creep Wave gets wiped out pretty quickly and. Those early levels on Ice 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 are really coming back to bite IG a bit and now. Burning's pressuring top, a tier 2 tower as well. This is something that needs to be addressed for IG. Burning's getting really big. That's where he's maybe even loved, he almost maybe attack. wishes he'd bought an Aquila there because he could have done so much damage to the tower, but in the end he's going to get a really fast Radiance. Even with the death to him, he's still already up to 3k gold, and we're just 9 minutes into this game. Yeah, and DK is still yet to lose a tower, not really taking substantial damage anywhere. Uh, I guess we, we didn't really talk about the Naga Siren pick too much since it was right at the very end, but like you mentioned, it's the, the way that I was framing the pick was that, okay, DK were going to be looking to fight into IG, and they needed something that was going to be equipped for that, but this is just the, this is kind of the trump card for them. It's also really nice in terms of synergy with the Batrider and the... The Kanka as well, just setting up for easy boats and preventing counter initiations after you grab somebody with the lasso. So yeah, I think it, it works out pretty nicely Dyer's here for DK. And we've seen a lot of attack. surprise last picks winning games over the course of this tournament, and th this could be the exact same thing here yeah. for DK. We've seen some surprise last picks lose games in the case of uh, Newbie with their Necrofoss in there. Uh, Blood Chain here stun, we go. Luo, can they get him into the boat? Yes, Great they burst will. damage. Even in ulti form, they bring him down. Meanwhile, mid lane, Ice 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 does not have Firefly, and he's got no way out of this one. Ferrari gets himself his second kill of the game, and now a T1 tower possibly to follow for both DK as well as IG. IG in the mid lane, DK at the bottom lane, but DK have a full HP tower waiting for them, so... I don't even know if DK can push this. IG, though, look like they're going to secure this T1 mid tower without too much hassle. Okay. Burning, still just farming away, getting pretty close to the relic. I think it's a tower calling. does fall, but... Even if DK don't get the tier 1 bottom, it's still an okay Radiant trade just because of all the farm and space that Burning's getting Radiant's up top. He's almost got his relic. Attack. Dyer's middle tower but is under IG, attack. it's not just a tier 1, they want the tier 2. Look at the skeletons! The skeletons! Creepy, creepy skeletons going everywhere, all over the place. They skeleton Ice 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 who does not have a blink dagger yet, and that's Mom, a tier 2 the tower now. How are the skeletons? Okay, not, not gonna have how. Has oh. They don't need it. The, the skeletons are strong. They, they've got it. The, the damage to HP ratio on those things is just insane. They hit so hard. I hate fighting skeletons. Enigma's worst nightmare is, is skeletons. Too, too spooky. Yeah. Well, Viper now. Oh, burning. Vitality booster. Ooh. He doesn't want to walk over this way. Okay. Oh. There you go. Almost walked into that incoming gank. He did. He did have some vision. He kind of knew what was going on. 
Yeah. Well, that's Pushes his relic. Me. 11 minutes in, not bad. Yeah, Ice Ice Ice, almost Blink Dagger. Also very not bad, despite two deaths. Could have yeah. been better, but, you know. There's some that, neutral camps death. here, but they're being claimed by IG, so... <laughs> no neutrals for you, Ice Ice Ice. Although, he's actually, he's actually... He's got his Blink Dagger up, so he should be just fine. Well, Luo still trying to just cobble some some more items together. Just as his treads and his vlads, he's doing all right though. I just still definitely want these these two on towers. Tron has 2k gold bank, so he's getting pretty close to a mech. Tide Hunter has 1.6k, so YYF also getting pretty close to a blink. So this is again another really crucial moment uh, for IG's five man. They and... did see the uh, witch doctor at top. So they know Witch Dog's up here. They're just going to creep skip and reveal the fact that they're going for this top push. But this top wave is actually pushed out. Ice Ice can push it out even further if he wants to, but probably doesn't feel too safe doing so. And also, I think he wants to hide his Blink Dagger. Something that IG, I don't believe, have scouted out just yet. Burning's pointing at his watch. IG, are you are you keeping an eye out? He's getting pretty close to the Radiance. They have managed to catch out Landum here. Yeah. Going for the D Ward. Gets punished then. Oh, the reveal. Definitely. I mean, DK knew already it was up there regardless, but uh, that was a bit overambitious Radiance from, bottom tower from the is Witch under Doctor. Attack. But all the meanwhile, bottom tier 1 tower under siege, Lua TP's in and forced to immediately pop the Your ultimate. MMY shows up, he's got Finger of Death, Burning may need to use a song. Yeah, MMY TP, Burning TP. MMY hasn't got a TP, so he's just going to walk away, but tower is under Burning attack. helps cover the retreat. And the tower, not a down to deny range, so next time DK come, they can probably get the money for this, so it's not going to actually be denied. At least not right now. <laughs> the illusion's just giving Faith a little bit of a hard time, but it's gonna be okay. Ice Ice Ice, hiding in the trees. Uh, vision. Not quite. They don't actually get vision uh, during the daytime or night nighttime, it looks like, in that spot. So he's gonna be okay. IG still getting closer to those two big items, the mech and the blink dagger. Meanwhile, bottom lane, yeah. in comes the combo. Nice. Gen and the combo's used, but. Slow. There's too much damage output from the, the boat, torrent, and the finger of death. This is the power of the, the Mushi Kunker. You set up these kills from such long range with three points in the X max as top tower is under attack. And, well, with that, DK get themselves more time, more space, and Burning's Radiance is just 400 gold away. Top T1 Radiance tower being pushed and seed by IG, but attack. the castle couldn't have come in, slowed that one down, Dyer's and top that's pretty annoying. It lasts a long ass time on those Chen neutrals, so. Looks like they'll get the T1 tower, maybe regardless, as Ferrari just tanks it up, happy to secure this top Radiance T1. Middle tower yeah, I says I stole their creep wave Radiance as well, so the, the lone siege fallen. creep is going to make its appearance now. But... <laughs> Everybody else got dragged attack. off into the trees and killed yeah. by, Dyer's top by tower tower has fallen. Oh, Ferrari gets the tower last hit. He's got Treads, Mech, Vitality Booster. He is so tanky right now. He's, he's good to go, and that's a hero which you... Don't, I mean, scale's okay, but you don't really want it to go super late game as a Viper, especially against the Naga Siren. Right now, there's just no real answers to Naga Siren's split push. There's not much, not the best AoE. Like, Tide's all the AoE you got, and Tide is not good against, like, a Naga Siren in the sense of his AoE. So I think for IG, they're looking at this game like, we got to end this game Radiance in the first bottom tower 20 to 30 attack. minutes. And with the Radiance up this fast, that timeline gets even pu pushed even faster. Like, Burning still needs a couple more big items before he becomes unkillable, but... Radiance IG need to stop. Snowball. Attack. Yeah, and uh, I didn't actually notice that Ferrari picked up the mech. I saw all of this pooled gold on Tron, and I thought, oh yeah, he's just going to be the one to pick it up. But nope, it's Necrobook for him. So IG feeling that they that they just want to end this game within the next 10, 15 minutes tops. They don't want to. Their plan is just to not deal with the Radiance Naga. Um, at all, really, and just continuously force things. Though they need to be careful about how that plays out. I mean, there's still tier one towers for them to take. There's still a glyph to work through, and any interruptions will just mean that burning completely takes over this game. Okay. Smoke towards yeah. mid lane. They're looking for someone to X turret, not going to find it, and uh, Mushi just like he'll just reveal himself. I say side's going to firefly down the creep wave. I G. Wow, dead. Oh, wow, bottom lane gets ganked out. Naga Siren with the uh, MMY line. MMY gonna TP out in front of Ferrari, who doesn't have anything to stop that with. And Radiance Middle Tower okay. is no. under attack. Nice little gank. It... He did, did buy his Blink Dagger though. Yeah, and they, they, they didn't even have Finger of Death available for that. They just walked up and uh, and right clicked him down with a little bit of line disabled. So nice little pickoff found by DK. Mushi exposes himself slightly, going for the Solution Room, but he's just gonna saunter on past. 
keeps on his path and he's gonna be okay. Uh, that was a few seconds away from disaster, but he's all right. Alrighty, so Mushi now continuing to hunt. This short cooldown on the ghost ship just allows oh, him to keep aggressive. can't afford to lose this gem. Oh no, there's your X boat. The torrent gonna be following. Finger of death is there. Unfortunately, they can't pick up the gem. Viper gonna take it, but either way, it's a kill, and that's a killing spree ended. So 400-ish gold going the way of MMY gets him even closer to his blink dagger. So even though they don't steal the gem, it's still a, a nice little pickup for DK. And IG, they have to... They really want to go get some value out of this Blink Dagger that they've just picked up, but... I wonder if they're going to be able to do so. The Radiance is already going to be a huge problem for RAF as far as initiations are concerned. And Mushi's just going to run straight at him, and that's going to prompt the, prompt the Blink out. But SSI's still on the hunt. Well, Knight's no. down here. And looking to, I'd love to use this Blink Ravage, but right now DK have an Observer that's going at everything out of range of the Sentry, so IG are probably thinking, oh, they can't really see us around here, but... Well-placed Observer were just out of range, seeing all of this movement from IG. DK just really finding these kind of similar ward spots, but just different enough that the sentries don't scout them out. Yeah, and this is where the, the gem pickup for IG is, is really paying dividends. They, they, they can't get slowed down by anything. Radiance they can't give DK any attack. unnecessary information. Uh, at this point, and they are going to move in, make a concerted effort towards this tier one tower bottom lane. But oh. I wonder if I think they've almost got the rank two boat up as well for Mushin. Yeah, nice exercise. What are you doing here, buddy? He's just trying Making to. Space. Try I mean, I saw the idea. Like, oh, let's just draw the creep wave up to me with Firefly, clear the creeps, and then blink and TP out. But he got gushed and couldn't actually blink right away. But luckily for him, Faith did not have a blink dagger or any sort of mobility items, or he may have died there. He's pushing the limits in typical ice 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 fashion. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Damn, Mushi just gonna keep on camping out down in bottom lane. I think he's he's resigned himself a little bit as he as he kind of always does in the conquer. So just not getting a whole lot of farm. He's much more about moving around and creating space. Ice 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 also gonna come down. How's the farm going on the Naga Siren? BOT's picked up. So Burning's just Burning's just doing his own thing for the time being. Yeah. That's, that's just fine. That's the DK game plan. They wipe out the Necrobooks, the Chen creeps as well. Like, that's push over. Kunker, Torrent, Firefly, Flame Break, and. Well, maybe they try and get the tier 1 with the next creep wave, but. Tron's gonna go back to the jungle, pick up some more creeps. I don't think he's got anything right now. That's problematic. Yeah, yeah and Burning moving in to take another jab at this tier 2 tower over on top lane. So, unless somebody TPs, IG gonna lose oh, that. Oh, boat. Torrent gonna land on Ferrari. Unfortunately, won't land on too much more. And with YWF in the front line, DK cannot follow this up. Ferrari's still full HP. Just pops a mech in. Yeah, he's good attack. to go. That's not even gonna stop him. The tornado also gonna apply some extra pressure. But it's top lane where Bernie's getting a tier 2 tower. Dyer's bottom and, tower well, that's a fallen. decent trade for DK for the most part. They don't really want to fight head on, at least not right now. Radiance top tower. <laughs> I say, say stealing creep waves again. This is seemingly his favorite tactic this game. But it prevents the 2 2 push for at least 30 seconds, so. And looks like he's gonna, gonna go he's for another next. one. He's not done. He sees those heroes. They are coming his way now. He's gonna be careful. And so they are trying to hunt him down. Blink TP is gonna be coming soon from Ice 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 as he's still drawing more creep waves. He doesn't want to get too much closer to the tower yet. He doesn't have information about who could have just TP'd in. So he's just going to blink through the trees, play it safe, but more space created. IG are going to look at that and be like, we really need a blink on like our Rubik. Because that's, their, right now their initiation is just unimpressive. It's good in a team fight with a blink Ravage, but a blink Tide is not going to really be able to like pick off the Batrider being annoying like that. So Lua has... Wow, okay. He he started a BKB and just decided, okay, screw it. Mass Necrobook. Yeah. DK are not are not fighting us. The other thing about going BKB is if nobody else has it, he's just gonna get netted and I net, I imagine they, and beat to death. They saw how farm burning is and were like, this oh, game Lua. is actually going really badly. Like and I, I think this game is not going well at all. We're gonna see Lua get initiated on top lane. The boat's there, but Radiant's something land. Tower has been the combo denied. not as not executed as well as they had in the past with MMY using finger of death and everything, but what I was trying to say is, IG probably saw how fun burning is and are like, oh crap, this game is going to get out of hand very quickly. We need to end ASAP, so they're going Necrobook on Chuan, Necrobook on Lycan. They've got double Necro 2s once Lua picks up his next recipe, and I think they're just going to try and end this game very soon with these Necro 3s. I don't know if DK is scared enough of the Necrobooks, and it's it's not IG adding more to the team fight, it's just adding more to the push, yeah. but we are getting to the point where DK 
could conceivably win a team fight, especially if IG are falling over themselves to end this game quickly. And like, the Necrobooks can be dealt with. Like Firefly, Flame Break, Torrents, like you've got all this long range nuke. Sure, you're going to take some damage from it, but once they're dead, that's a huge source of damage for IG that they've just spent 5k gold apiece on taken out of a fight. So it's all worth it if you can actually do that. Ice 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 lurking over the trees. As, uh, maybe going to go for some more creep skipping action here. No, he's going to go for... up. Oh, link back to base. I think he quickly realizes he needs to be there in case IG try and push the high Radiant's ground. top tower is under attack. Damn. Top lane's going to push in. Tier 3 taking some damage. Burning, just setting up shop over in the Radiant jungle. Going to get the other lanes pushed out as well. And IG really looks like they want to force something here. They're forcing... Ro well, they're, they're distracting for Roshan, but Ice 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 knows this. He's going. He wants to check this one out, so... He is a good idea. MMY does not have Finger of Death, unfortunately. Otherwise, they'd be able to stop this. He's going to Firefly in in two seconds, maybe. Naga Siren Illusion's there, and Lua gets lassoed. Lua's done for. He's going to get lifted onto the high ground. The Impale not going to land, but it doesn't matter. He's stuck, trapped up there, and Tide can only just stand there and watch as Lua gets picked off. The call from IG to do a, like, distract mid with four heroes and have Lua solo Roche does not work out at all. Ice 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 figures it out and punishes the Lycan for it. And these, these lanes getting continuously pushed out. IG can have to take a minute or so to deal with that. The roving Naga Siren Illusion still finding heroes here, there, and everywhere. Looks like Burning wants this Chen Creep. Is he going to get the Chen Creep? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Down goes oh. the Wild Kid. Rest in peace. IG have vision up, like, on the other side of the map. At bottom lane, as well as, uh, well into the cliff of DK's, DK's jungle. But I say size with a newly purchased gem. Going to clear that one out, and... Well, denies a lot of vision from IG, and right now, DK just in a Radiant's really good position. MMY and Mushi are once again hunting, and the thing is, they can kill like, anyone. Like, they, they've killed the Lycan multiple times. This Ogre Club was not turned into a BKB, so he does not really have that defensive capability to survive a boat into a Finger of Death. And Finger of Death is back online for MMY. Yeah, and IG just have absolutely nothing against the Naga Siren in the late game. Yeah, like, it was a smart... Just... That last big Naga Siren was just, like, stumped IG, it feels like. Value Naga. Yeah. And there's <laughs> going to be a Manta style up in like 100 gold. So Burning is... He is so massive right now. He is 3k ahead of the Viper. And that's with IG being ahead on Towers, I believe. No, it's... Okay, it's similar on Towers. Yeah. I don't want to jinx it, but I feel like the Naga Siren game might be the shortest one of the series <laughs> so far. Which is this... a very odd thing to say. MMY's been scouted by Wolves. He thought he was he thought he was being sneaky here at the top lane, waiting for a pickoff, but Wolves were on top of him, and, well, he quickly realizes that, and if your opponents know you're there, you better back the hell off, because there's no point hiding there. Your opponents aren't going to put themselves in a position where they can die, or if they're coming, it's because they're coming to kill you, so... They back off to their jungle, they'll play it safe, and... More Lycan Wolves summon these. Lycan Wolves just so pesky to deal with because of how much they can just scout around the entire map. Ice 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 doing similar with the gem. Yeah, and this IG gem has not been doing the rounds. DK actually have some pretty good information, and these wards have been up for a little while, so... And despite the gem, IG don't have full control, and DK looking for some more pickups. They're gonna smoke straight into two. Faith on his broomstick. Oh, he gets a lift before an impaler or anything comes in, but the boat is there, and actually blinks out! Telekinesis with no right clicks. MMY says Radiant's thank you for that. Didn't even attack. fade bolt him. Yeah. I was on cooldown, actually, but... IG, not going to find too much there, but they also don't get picked off, which is the good news. And now they do have that Rubik Blink Dagger, which is actually a pretty important item to ha be having when DK are just playing so pesky with their split push, with their little two to three man ganking squads. You need that mobility on your Rubik. I mean, they might catch a split pusher at this point, but their problem hasn't been stalling right outside the base and having initiation. It's actually been... Um, that the split push is so relentless that they haven't even really been able to get up to DK's doorstep. So we'll see if this is going to change things at all. Though they are, DK are pretty ruthlessly pushing out the, the side lanes right now. It's constant, relentless from burning. They're up just by a singular kill, but the kills aren't what matter in a game in a draft like this. Reaver picked up. Burning doesn't even go Manta. He wants full survivability as far as his illusions are concerned, making them as tanky as possible. Then he'll probably go back to the Manta afterwards, but... He wants that Heart of Tarrasque first, and then Manta Star later. As he TPs back home, and... Does he already have the Vitality Booster? No, he's still got another 1100 gold to go before Heart is completed. 
but necro so, threes for ig two of them online which to me is ig's window to win this game is probably in the next five minutes after that i think it's, they just can't deal with this naga siren yeah, and they're smoked up looking for a pickoff, but even if they get something here, their lanes are going to be in a bad position. And if they don't find anything, then the lanes are going to be off. They jump in. Yeah, blink, la blink, blink, lift onto Ice Ice Ice. And, well, he's going to get full staffed out of there, but not far oh, enough. No. He gets oh, brought man. down by an easy, oh, easy back, rotation sorry. from IG. But as you said, they're not going to get too much more out of it. They force out Lua's shapeshift at the top lane, just casually. As Mushi just throws an X boat, not much was actually there to help him out. And... It's bottom he line. just voted from the trees. <laughs> he was just relying on the panic factor for yeah. for Luo because they don't know where they don't know where MMI is. He could be he could blink out right as that boat comes in and finger and you you this, and you die. So. This is worrisome though. Double Necro three push coming in. Batrider, Batrider actually lost the gem there. That's actually no Rubik Rubik covered it. Never mind. Faith has it in his hands. But, no, sorry. Yeah, Faith, no, Faith. What am I talking tower. about? Faith is on the other team. Yeah, that's Isis, Isis, Jem. Yeah, the dumb... Oh, Blink. Ravage catches that lamb. He's dead before the fight even begins. Burning as well gets low. Song of the Siren pop, but that's just going to buy some time for IG. Glyph is also being used, so these double Necropulks are going to tear apart this tower. This is maybe Rax. IG may be finding a way to break through. Huge initiation. Mushi gets the boat of a lifetime. Brings down the Rubik's side things off. They want Luo as well. He gets hit by the torrent. That'll be the death of your life. And Ferrari now dead as well. Four on the sideline. Chen is going to be number five. Team wipe from DK on the back of a Mushi torrent boat initiation. The Song of the Siren setting things up. And DK go big. And if they hadn't done that, they were going to be going home in game three. Because that looked like they were maybe going to be losing Raxes there. Boat was actually on cooldown for like 5-10 seconds right as the song was used. So Mushi called for, okay, maximum duration on the song, and then he ran over into this little corner uh, right here and just waited for the, you know, waited for the boat and completely caught IG unawares. That was really nicely played Ooh. by That's... DK. And 3k gold on Mushi after that fight. That was... Radiance middle that was a yeah, huge I mean, He doesn't get much farm early on. He ro spends a lot of time rotating, creating space, but then when you get a fight like that, suddenly Ooh, you're you're gold. fine and dandy. We'll get another look at that last fight. Nope, we're not. Get some dubstep Radiance going on from the replay. <laughs> the Chinese top. instant replay a bit broken. That was some, some Skrillex style instant replay. As, uh, we'll see. DK now. Heart of Taras complete on burning, not to mention 1500 gold. BKB for your bat rider. Things looking all of a sudden really good for the Dota King. And where are the gems? Okay, so there's one gem on the courier, and the second gem is in the fountain. So DK claiming both of them. IG can buy another one. Attack. Right now, it's actually in stock, but them getting. The fact that they got turned around on that push means that this game just got a hell of a lot harder. They are getting pretty close to a refresher orb on the tide, but I mean, they've mm. still got to, even if they take one lane of Rax, there's still tier twos up in both top and bottom lane, which are on full HP. So that's another few minutes that they still have to deal with. And that's more time for the Naga Siren to farm and Burning's now completed his heart, so. Yeah, and the, the tide is just terrifying. not gonna be that good against Naga in general. Like Naga yeah. is not unlikely to be caught by it, just has illusions in front. There's a BKB on your Batrider, so DK can actually initiate into the Tidehunter if they really want to because of the BKB on Ice Ice Ice. But at the same time, I just, I did really good to go push high ground, and that's something which will just kind of play into DK's hands right now with their current set of items. Burning's going to have a Manta style very, very soon. And Illusion. I really worry for IG as far as options. They, they really went, what? Did we talk about this? Hmm? What am I looking at? Viper, his item. Okay. What? <laughs> I uh, need to kill illusions. How do you kill Naga Siren illusions? Physical damage is absolutely useless. She has way too much armor. Fail so fish. I don't know, I, man. I guess. I guess this is AOE magical damage. Mjolnir. The, I don't know. I, I think Mjolnir plan. maybe would have made been a little better, but yeah. What else do you buy as the as the Viper here? I, I don't, don't know. know. I'm not. I'm not sure what the answer is. But regardless, I think IG. Is under attack. They, they, I, I, I feel like they've lost this game. Yeah, this I point. think you could, anything you would have bought with that, like 5k, I'm not sure what else. I mean, you can get an Aghanim Scepter, Radiance but an Aghanim Scepter is not going to win you the game. Fallen. The Radiance no. is at least like saying, look, this will help me deal with illusions. This will help me scale towards the late game. I can farm a lot faster with it. So maybe we get a Radiance, Heart of Terrasse, you get a Butterfly. 
get some more damage items up, and maybe Viper can become a super late game carry, but... I don't know. As you just got split pushed to death. Like, you, you wouldn't look at Batrider and Kunkka and say, oh yeah, those are those are some great split pushing heroes you've got right there, DK. That's that's what you need to to hold this game out, but they made it work. It, it turned out to be exactly the the ticket. And some really nice plays from Ice Size. He kind of realized early on, oh hey, look, I can just intercept creep waves all game. And that, that's exactly what he, he's done. He, he intercepted a creep wave at level one to get his level two, and he's just done it ever since. So give IG headaches. Yeah, he's been running circles around them uh, th throughout this game, and right now IG just running out of options. Tide Refresh is maybe going to be their kind of next and possibly their final hurrah as far as fighting DK is concerned. DK see that Roshan has respawned and could possibly consider going into the pit fairly soon. Haven't got the best Roshan lineup, but you push out these lanes enough with Naga Saren Illusions and they sure as hell can take a pretty, pretty safe Roshan with Naga Saren Illusions pushing out pressuring waves. Mm. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to think of what yeah I'm just trying to think of what plays IG have at this point they, they, they can't even get their lanes out past their their tier twos and they've just got the one tier two remaining on mid so I don't know their, their draft well and truly peaked a little while ago and this is this is now DK's domain it's where... just wandering around in the dire jungle <laughs> so yeah you know yeah go for a stroll it's where they it's almost like maybe going to be thinking like we could have gone for the Nature's Prophet instead of the Tide Hunter, which would have given them more pushing power as well as a late game carry that can deal a bit better with the Naga Siren. Still not ideal. I don't know if it would have fixed things necessarily, but yeah, I think the the two thoughts are like okay, we could have done with a little bit more pick off. Um, maybe we could have substituted a pick off hero for mid because we already had the Chen to buy the mech. Uh, or maybe it could have been something like a, you know, your clockwork in the off lane. And the other thought is, of course, going to be we should have banned the damn Naga. But, I mean, th there are other heroes that could have taken the role of what Burning has done this game, just in a slightly different manner. Yeah. Maybe not quite as effective with pushing out as many lanes as a Naga. So, in case we get something like a Morph lane, you can split push yeah. really just as effectively as a Naga can in a singular lane, so... End of the day, DK had a strategy, they executed really well, and right now they find themselves in a good position to start turning things around, because they're trailing 2-0 in a best-of-seven Grand Finals here on the WPC, for those, those of you just tuning in. IG looking to uh, take some revenge on DK, who beat them in the last WPC Grand Finals, but right now, uh, things looking pretty good overall, just not in this game number three. Yeah. And there's your Tide Refresher. So 10k gold, 10k experience, DK holding onto a pretty hefty lead, and... Faith, what's he doing here with this Invisirin? Just trying to see if he can do something about Ice Ice Ice. He does have this blink, but no, not going to happen. Need, need to wait for the backup, perhaps, but uh, it's going to be. Um, looks like a late game uh, plan Chuan. from IG. Very well. <laughs> He's done for. That's, that's your chance. Not the biggest of deals, but ne needless to say, it's going to be another kill for DK and just more control going their way. They've got Nagasar in mid lane, who's actually going to TP home completely exhausted of mana. Burning's just going to transition to a, not just a, a split pushing carry, but also a just straight up team fighting right clicking carry with Diffusal upgraded as well. He immediately upgraded from the level 1 Diffusal. He actually wants to fight. He ensnares someone like the Lycan or the Viper and he can just straight up man fight those heroes with a ton of illusions and almost instantly kill them. Well look, if you're DK, the, the plan is, okay look, I don't want this game to go too much longer. We still have three more to win. If we're going to take the series, so maybe closing this game out, just, you know, expediting the process just a little bit, uh, I don't think would be the worst thing uh, in the world for them. What, what, what else is there to talk about? Uh, Chen, Mushi being looking sneaky. like it's going to be 0% win rate in this, yeah. in this series so far. Yeah, Mushi's using the new X to TP back to base to refill his bottle and mana. Some nice little tactics you can do with the new X marks a spot. But yeah, Chen not winning games, and it's because these games all just so high pressure. They drag out, and that's where just Chen is not as good. He can't put enough pressure on early game, and then unless you win the mid game and then just win the game off of that, the Chen late game doesn't do that much. Compared to an Enchantress, who can win you the early and the mid game, and also scale pretty well late game. So there's a reason Enchantress is being banned and Chen is not. I really want to see Mushi X mark either Ice 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 or MMY, and then just have them blink in, you know. 
throw up some noise, maybe maybe get a BKB out of the Lycan, and then just get X Mark straight back. <laughs> We haven't we haven't seen yeah. the limits of how cute this X marks the spot change can be just yet. Oh. And uh, Deke, if he'll, Mushi Idea. gonna find himself a double damage. This is almost. Like... And he's sneaking in from behind. Oh my god. Lamb scouts him with the smoke in the, from the side shop here. Sentry gets dropped by attack. Faith. He's gone high ground here. Burning can just pop a song of the siren and look to set things up, and he'll do just that. Boat, oh, Torrent, combo. it's so perfect. This is going to be a disaster. There's not enough BKBs to save them here. It hits them spot on. Faith is there. The Ravage comes, but it's not going to be enough to turn this one around. This is just a complete cluster of ID heroes. The Refresh ulti is there. Burning actually getting low. He does get brought down. In the end, it's a dead Burning. He buys back. He's looking to re-engage. Lion going to find YYF in just a second. Cancels the blink with a right click. The chase is on. There's an Impale as well as a Hex here. And YYF, I don't, don't see a way out of this way for him. Impale will finish him off. Ferrari on the high ground as MMY blinks away from him with Burning buying back. Ferrari gonna die here. Almost bring... I think he may bring down Lamb. No, the Voodoo Restoration. Sad life. They go back into Roshan. That's actually... I thought that was gonna go a lot worse for IG. They yeah, still that, lose the fight, but it does not go as That was not, not nearly like as well. clean as I thought it was gonna be for... for DK, but... Still went... Still went pretty well. Did it have to invest the Naga Siren buyback, but well worth it. And that was in the face of double ravage as well. So yeah, they... something else to keep in mind. The, uh, like the BKB on the Viper and the Lycan, like you can instantly pop that after the song. So I guess it was just enough to keep those two heroes alive at least. And then you have the Chen heal, they're getting a lot of the damage. But Roshan will be claimed now. We'll see Burning actually picking up the Aegis for himself. So. Probably grab his Manta Styles. We'll get one last win for that last team fight now. The, the song setup was perfect. The BKBs come out immediately, though. And that really set things up. Immed also, the Viper Strike immediately thrown on Burning with double Ravage hitting Burning. That was the main problem there. Burning, I don't think... If he didn't have his main hero in the middle of things there, I think if it was just his illusion, it would have gone a lot better for DK. Um, he thought... He I think he just figured that because Mushi was going to throw a perfect... Boat plus Torrent that they'll just straight up win the fight, but with the BKBs used them with Viper Strike and Double Ravage on Naga, Burning couldn't take it, take all that damage. Yeah, I says I actually chose to lasso the Viper um, out of the song there, but he got his BKB off, so that was a little bit weird from him. I think he could have, you know, could have maybe even gone for the Chen. Wouldn't have been bad value to to stop the Hand of God going off, but. It's a coulda, shoulda, woulda, and yep. DK is still definitely winning this game. Yeah, they're pushing out the mid lane. I'd size goes in with a BKB lasso. This time it will be the Viper once again, but Viper this time is going to... Ooh, gets sent back by the Chen. Purge nice little save. Purge it with the Diffusal Blade. Oh. Radiant's Maybe just didn't see it burning. Fallen. You should be able to hear it, unless you're listening yeah. to music while you're, while you're playing. Burning needs a bit of his, his T-Swizzle going while he's playing Dota. He can't concentrate <laughs> That's the god's recipe for success. Look at it go. Yeah. APM increases by 20% with some good old country pop going. Well, that puts uh, DK get a T2 tower out of it. They also just keep on buying time because their late game is just looking pretty good with Naga Saren being as found as she is and Mushi also starting to scale well towards the late game. BKB and Shadow Blade on him. Yeah. Mushi's looking scary. Ice 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 is a ton of farm, but IG, another opportunity to take a swing down mid. They've got this double Ravage available, and, well, okay. DK do need to execute well to win this fight. I think they just realized that IG, they can't Dyer's just set with a song because IG had the counter in their BKBs as far as withstanding the boat plus torrent combo. Faith gonna get a high ground ward, get some good vision here, and they're dealing with the next book pretty well. They'll fallen. bring down the tower though, and that's something which was just inevitable with how low that tower was from the previous push. Naga Illusions just... Chasing Faith forward, gonna see a buy- oh, a send back, there's your there defusal, this time he will get it. The lasso catches out Luo, the finger of death will get Chuan as well, and Luo now, does he have a way out, pops a BKB, and he gets ensnared. Luo trying to TP in the ensnare, he's gonna actually get out of there, really smart play from Luo, but the damage is done, IG lose two, and here comes the push down the mid lane. And they still have the Ravages, it's only the supports, but they did end up using the BKB on the Lycan. So that's probably the biggest deal out of all of that, and yeah, DK gonna be able to start start poking away. Lycan just gonna buy up a Maelstrom, trying to get anything that they can to, to be able to just get another shot at cleaning up Raxes. The, the tier 2 still stand. I think at this point, if IG are gonna win the game, they almost just have to go straight for tier 4s and yeah. end it. I don't think they can afford to 
drag it out, take multiple lanes of racks, they're just gonna lose to the Naga. They have so. been ignoring the side lanes, like that that push going, at least going for the mid Raxes, and then maybe they fall back and try to work on some side lanes, but right now it's get Raxes as soon as possible. Like You need that Rax advantage against the Naga Siren in the late game. Uh, the DK, for now, gonna play things a bit a bit slowly. Not interested in ending the game as right away. Mushi's actually got a harder terrasse, which he can buy anytime he's he's ready to. Maybe once buyback, but he's gonna be nearly unkillable with this heart of terrasse. Yeah, so has the recipe up, and yeah, he, he's just gonna consider sending the courier out right now. Looks like some other people have some shopping to do, so it's gonna head back. Oh, I actually well, we'll see if the smoke is gonna find Lanham. Before I share my anecdote, nah, he's, he's almost got his axe, but he'll get picked off. Curses! Yeah, uh, so somebody, uh, Mr. Blue, uh, a friend of mine, messaged me and told me what this, uh, what MMY's courier says, and it's actually just MMY's pumpkin head. So, there you go. Radiance okay. Middle Tower. Mystery is solved. Under right. I know Mr. Blue. He cooked me spaghetti once. Mr. Blue's a an awesome guy. Yeah, he, he makes anyway. Good, he makes some good spaghetti. That, that, that's the way to to get gods to remember you. You just gotta cook him food, and then... <laughs> unforgettable. That's why Brian's my favorite person at the BTS studio. Oh, Twan, he's, oh, he's done for. He's caught out. He throws a hand of God, but he's dead either way. And gets a, a quick and easy pick off. The Chen Creep Army also being dealt with by the by the Naga Lucian. Loses one, gonna lose more, and also gonna lose the, the Necro Archer, so... Yeah, Brennan even just defusing the, the Necro Creeps to get the extra gold at this point. Which is maybe a reason that he should have considered holding onto the Fusal 1 for a little bit longer, but not a huge deal. Yeah. No, big lure buys have completed Mjolnir, so not worried about buyback. I think they realize that they've got to win soon and buybacks is not going to win the game. If they're buying back just to hold onto their Raxes, they're never going to push, they're never going to find a way to break through DK, so... DK, back off, playing things safe and slowly for now. Still, some time left on the a well about 30 seconds left on the aegis and then we're going to be looking towards the next rotation so dk decided not to go for a high ground push even with the aegis there and getting the chen pick off well the high ground has been their undoing in the other two games so far this series so i don't think it's too surprising to see dk taking it taking it a little bit more cautiously here and bernie's and I, just I he's got so much farm he wants that last item slot filled as well he's probably like almost yeah. begging for the aegis to expire just so he can buy another item get a butterfly probably yeah. yeah, I think Butterflies he's got, pick up. He's got 7k gold with the two pieces purchased, so he would have been on like 9 to 10k before that. And yeah, he'll have a Butterfly now. This is where it's time to start talking about courier items. Have that, that value crit on the courier. Crit. Sub it in as you summon, summon some illusions. Necrobook. Yeah. Whatever it may be. Or you, yeah, or you could yeah, have the crit which you replace, yeah, after you, you replace your Mantis style with, I guess. But... Yeah. 44 minutes in and burning more or less maxed out, as far as his first six slots are concerned. His next however many slots still wait, waiting to be filled. And... He could also just go for a refresher and try and be really cheeky and just summon up a bunch of illusions and then double song IG away from their axes and just do it that way. But I, I think they can win a straight up fight. I don't think that's, that's necessary. I want to try and push this bottom lane. And, uh, where things stand right now, DK marching on forward. MMY has not died this entire attack. game, by the way. His line play has been pretty flawless. He's level 17. Oh my gosh. This MMY is a, line. This is a it's... very impressive line. I mean, we saw two games of it in the semifinals against the Alliance. And it was a similar thing with just DK looking really good there on the back of his line. This time around, things are a bit tougher against IG. They're down two games, but game three going well so far. But Naga Illusions mid, they've got heroes pushing bottom, but I say so, going to TP himself top, so... Going to go for the full three-way pushing action. Necrobook's on the defensive. Really not where you want to be seeing them, no. but... Burning just... An unnecessary necro evil for IG here. At least, the good thing is, like, you throw, him at, you throw him at DK, giving Burning 200 gold doesn't matter. It's not like you're feeding Burning gold. Even the experience doesn't matter, so as long as Burning's seeing the last hits, you're not really feeding anything to him. Either way. No, no, he's, he's still got a whole courier to fill up. What are you, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> the refresher, necro, BKB, crit, or whatever it may be. Illusion's gonna be heading up onto the high ground here at bottom lane. 
Meanwhile, Ice 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 still pushing out that top lane and Luo Penance. defending the mid. Chen's just being forced to Pentinence illusions, even with this level one Pentinence. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Anything to try and stall the push and deal with these illusions. This is by far the most annoying part of Naga Siren Dota. The yeah. the part where you just decide, oh hey look, I have a zero commitment ability on a 40 second cooldown to take damage off of their buildings. I'm just gonna keep doing that. So yeah, I'll take the hundred plus. I think that's plus. the one thing that gets to me. Yeah. I'll take the 100 plus game two over uh, <laughs> over this, this style of play. Uh, over watching four Naga Siren Illusions yeah. hit buildings for yeah. 15 minutes? Yeah. yeah. I, I think I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. Well, there's an X possible. Trying to force out the BKB. Doesn't actually go for a well, go, throws the torrent too late. Tron's dead. Wow. Oh, Naga Siren God. Illusions plus Ice 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 <laughs> equals dead Chen. Okay, so Chen's down. Not that that's a huge deciding factor for breaking, but Ice Ice Ice. Sneaks the tier 3 tower, blinking up into the high ground. Ravage is going to use Burning the Tiger for this one. He's got buyback and he may need to use it right now. The boat is there, can't actually get for Song of the Siren. He's short on mana. The second Ravage comes through. YYF is going to be brought down to pay the price for this one. There's your Witch Doctor Ultimate. Death Lord comes out. Look at it go. Onto Ferrari. Ferrari's going to bring him down before he actually dies there. It's going to be a, a Naga Siren buyback. Is Naga Siren back in the fray just yet? You betcha? Yeah, Burning's mid. He's going for the Raxxas. He's going for the IG base. Meanwhile, Radiant at bottom lane, Fate's getting low, Ferrari getting low. They can't really defend at this stage, and Naga Illusion's going to look to finish off this mid melee rack. Burning also rotating towards the top lane, being chased down. He be in from your Chen, and that's a Chen you can't really catch up to the Naga Siren. Radiant's Naga Illusion will get the mid rack. Cost them a buyback, but they've got a mid rack as well as the bottom tier 3 tower from Mushi. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. And Mushi TP out, he'll play it. Attack. Nothing to cancel this, or is there Faith Blink Telekinesis? Not in range. Yeah, Faith actually made a pretty big play in that last fight with the Stolen Torrent, but... DK still take a lane of Rex, just investing in Nagasar and buyback, and... They can back off and do it again, wait for Roshan, which has actually respawned already, so they can... pass it over to Burning if they want to. And even when IG drop everything to blow up the Nagasai. Now Mushi's coming to his own as a big damage dealer and yeah. IG just don't have the don't have the tools anymore. Well, they're gonna keep on sitting it back, defending their base. They're probably thinking DK are tired. Even if we're not gonna win this game, let's tire them out some more. Make them work for it. They just it's also if DK get too bold and they mess up and they get five man wiped by double ravage, they can just push down mid and take the round. Like that's the other That's the dream. That's the other out for IG here. It's, it's a very slim chance, but you have to force DK to end the game. Because that, yeah. that's that's the thing that DK have struggled to do in all of the other matches this series. So well, IG is smoked up in the enemy jungle here. They've got no ravages and playing this aggressive. I think they're thinking if they find Burning and kill him, it's a fantastic win. They're going to catch up Lamb instead, and that's a dead Witch Doctor to start things off. Burning nowhere to be seen. He's still seeing it base. Doesn't have TP either, and they're actually on the hunt here. Mushi, any de detection to deal with him Radiant's doesn't look like it. And meanwhile, top lane attack. Naga Illusions gonna help bring down another tier 3 tower so IG's Radiant's base slowly slowly fallen. crumbling next in the mid lane there's gonna be a boat to follow is this gonna pull him back gonna land as well as I oh, Lua goes in they want Mushi but nothing to cancel his TP out so TKB TP from Mushi it's still IG buying time though they forced Mushi to not just TP but TP all the way back to fountain yeah and DK is still really pressing things pretty aggressively here burning no buyback, but another 8k gold, so... Like he's just gonna keep do. up the illusion siege. Yeah, that's about it. I don't know if they've scouted Roshan just yet. They'll probably go and poke their head in right now. It's been up for yeah, okay. some Looks like it's been time. Scouted. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's Burning's heading like straight over. They know what's going on. Yeah. Radiant... Oh, lose that courier. That's problematic. As uh, we will see Roshan attempted by DK now. Double damage on Burning will make this pretty easy taken for him, and it looks like, um, well, maybe the Kunker, yeah, Kunker can drop his TP, Lamp's got space, uh, pretty much anyone except Burning has some space for an Aegis. So. It will go to MMY on the Lion. A big playmaking line with a BKB now, ready to go. Not awful to have it on the, the Lion, but again, I think in, in DK's mind, they've, they've won this game already so it's just a, a formality of yeah. going to uh, the, going to close it out the only way they lose is if burning somehow gets picked off with no buyback and they get like they get thrown so if they yeah. want to play ultra safe they don't push until he has they buyback. can just wait two minutes it's two minutes but, or they just go look for like, like this lua's being put out hasn't popped his bkb impale finger to start things off the flame break back and with a maledict vote you betcha lua's going down and he does not have a buyback so this is possibly game here if 
IG can't hold, and I don't know if they can hold. There's an initiation from YWF, uses the first Ravage. Stolen both gonna be thrown back at DK, but meanwhile, Burning is getting top racks. So the rat Dota, it's real, and Radiance it's coming your way, IG. Top rack is gonna go down, and with that, it looks like the end of IG. They're gonna call GG. We're going to a game four with DK taking their first game of the best of seven. IG lead it two games to one. DK not out of it yet. They show they've still got some strategies DK left up victory. their sleeve. Yeah, and the, the shortest game so far. With Naga Siren. It, oh, it yeah. came true. The, the Naga game was the shortest game, and even that was 52 minutes. So the, the, the series is shaping up pretty interestingly so far. I think IG, you say, okay, look, they went for a pushing strategy. There was a ticking clock in the Naga Siren, and they just didn't quite manage to execute fast enough. So yeah. I think a really nice surprise last pick from DK. Also some really nice play during the mid game, making all that space, getting those pickoffs. But um, I think a lot of it does also come back to the... The draft. So maybe we'll just see a return to these teams trying to play more, uh, more even games. Neither of them shifting their focus too much away from being competitive in the mid game. Well, IG are going to talk this one out, figure out what went wrong, what they can do differently as far as drafting and just general play play goes, and we'll see what they have in store for us in game number four, guys. Stick around. We've got game four of this best of seven grand finals. DK versus IG in the two hundred and fifty thousand US dollar WPC grand finals. I'm Gods. Joining me is Basekip. We've got Game 4 coming up next.